Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. I'm Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It's very, very nice to meet you. And if you are returning, welcome back. So, Twin Flames, weekly conversation. Yeah, this is for twin flame, twins in separation. No communication, stuff like that. What do we want to talk about this? Oh, uh, by the way, if you're seeing a bunch, you're seeing a bunch of smoke. It's because I, I'm I'm burning a sage smudge. Yeah, smudge, sage smudge. Yay! I love sage. It's one of, actually it's my like favorite thing. I don't burn anything else other than sage. Really, I haven't found anything that resonates with me well enough. Anyway, what do we want to talk about this week? Um, the biggest thing I've been very eager to talk about is balance. Um, and that's internal balance, a balance between uh, masculine energies and feminine energies. Um, if you've been on this journey for a while, you have come across um, the, the understanding that this journey is about becoming whole again. Um, uh, and um, you've heard that, and I, and you probably... I mean, if you've been following me, at least you've heard this, heard me say this before, but many others say it as well. Um, union cannot be, union with your twin flame in the physical cannot be, um, will not, excuse me, will not manifest until union within the self is, is there, until you find union within yourself. And so that's what we mean by becoming whole again. Um, and union within the self is between the masculine and the feminine. Everybody, everybody contains, excuse me, everybody contains masculine and feminine energy. Okay. Um, even, and so no matter where you, what you identify with, whether you are, you identify as a divine masculine or as a divine feminine, you still have both energies within. And so lately I have been, you know, for some time now, I've been really focusing on, um, healing balance going within whenever some I find myself being triggered by something whenever I find myself feeling some sort of emotion that's not out of the ordinary because I do work very you know I do try very much to live in a, the highest vibration that I can at all times um, now I just want to say I'm not trying to live in a high vibration at all times um, so that I you know, don't have to deal with low vibrational stuff. No, that's not it. Um, I just, it is, it is beneficial to live in the highest vibration that you can for as long as you can, um, because that way you will be able to really manifest the things that you want and, um, you know, really do the things that you want to do. If you're spending all of your time in a low vibration, then, you know, you're just going to feel crappy all the time and things aren't really going to work out for you, blah, blah, blah. So that's, that's what I mean by that. But um, union, balance. So I have been in, in moments where I've like dropped in vibration. Um, I, I would go within and try and figure out what was going on uh, internally and try and fix things internally. And, um, and now that's mainly if I found that the reason why I had dropped was my own and say not because of like say my twin or the collective or I'm just, you know, I'm just picking up on energies from other places, uh, other whatever. Um, and so going in and with, and doing, going within, spending so much time within also encouraged me to discover the divine masculine within me because I have, I identify and I, even though I've reached this new state of balance, I still identify as the, as the divine feminine in the situation. Um, and all of this internal work has helped me discover the mask, the divine masculine within me. And I have to say, it has been one of the most beautiful experiences ever. It's an amazing, amazing feeling. Everything that I was looking for, for my twin to fulfill in me, in a physical sense, I'm fulfilling for myself now. And it feels great. Now, I don't want anyone to think that once you reach this state, you no longer need your twin anymore. That's not the case. But it's, I will say that it is making dealing with separation so much easier. It's making dealing with um, all of the, the things that come up, all the triggers that may come up. I mean, there aren't many triggers anymore, um, at least not for me, because I've done a lot of work to work through them. Um, but like anything, any time I need support, anytime I, I 
want want to feel loved or anything. I can just go within. And that's the point. And that's been the point the whole time. Not just for anyone that's on a twin flame journey, but for everybody. Like this is what, like if you are a true twin and you are really taking this path seriously, um, you know, you are here to help teach people basically what we're doing. And because, it, you know, it's so funny because I've been thinking about it and we're here to like help anchor in this um, this new, this fifth dimensional reality that the planet is moving towards. We're moving, we're in the process of moving to the four, from the third to the fourth dimension right now. Um, and then from the fifth, fourth to the fifth. And so Twin Flames are here to help anchor that, to help, um, you know, aid in that process. We're here to teach people, help people learn about unconditional love. Now, that's where the other part of the situation comes in. Balance between the masculine and feminine energies within you cannot come without unconditional love for the self. And the only way that you will really be able to give unconditional love to anyone else, um, even your twin, to be honest, you have to be able to give it to yourself first. So going within, dealing with the triggers, dealing with all the negative, uh, sad, uh, low vibrational emotions, facing them, okay? But facing them with intentions of healing them, not maintaining a victim mentality, not keeping yourself on this wheel of drama, what an association to whatever you're feeling. The only way you can heal from something is if you face it, okay? You have to to face it. So that also means that you have to face your divine masculine within or if you're or your divine feminine within, right? And look, I, I really I want this to be very, very clear. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Um, your divine masculine or divine feminine within wants to communicate with you, wants to f to to face you wants to come into union with you, okay? So for, like, I'll speak to the Divine Feminines first. Your Divine Masculine within is trying really hard to get to you. Really is trying very hard to get to you. But what we both need to understand, both uh, Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine, we both have things standing in our way. And that is mental constructs. That are Those are beliefs. Those are misunderstandings. Those are um, resentments that both sides are harboring for each other. Okay, and this is where, and look, I am, I am absolutely yes because I hear, I feel some of you are a little confused at the moment. I am absolutely talking about this on an energetic level right now. Okay, so everything that you've been experiencing in your physical reality is happening on the inside first. Is happening on an energetic level. Everything in your physical reality is an extensive, is a directly related extension to what you have going on inside internally. So this drama that you have been experiencing with your twin is actually the same drama that's playing inside, playing out inside. Only it just looks different because it's in a different setting. We're in a physical reality, not on. You know what I mean? That I hope that made sense. But um, so we all, so so just like, just like your average woman would look at a man and say, oh, he's probably a dog, this, that, and the other, he's probably a player, blah, 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 you know, he's, he, he's, a, he's a little boy, he needs to grow up, blah, blah, blah. And just like your average man would look at a woman and say, oh, she's, she's a gold digger, she's, she's, a, she's a bee, she's a, you know, I mean, she's drama, she, she, she just wants to, she's crazy, she just wants to, all that kind of stuff. That's also happening within. So the only way you are going to get past that is if you heal that drama within yourself, is if you heal your inner masculine and your inner feminine and you face each other and have it out, talk to each other, communicate with each other, listen to each other. Don't communicate with intentions of putting one down, emasculating, um, uh, 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 what, what would be the, what would be the, the, I don't know what, defeminize, like, I don't know what, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like, you have to go within and do these things. And it's not like, it's probably not going to be the same as, well, no, it really isn't going to be the same as if you were having this conversation with your divine feminine or divine masculine in the physical, because ego wouldn't be so much in play here. Um, when you go internally, ego has less to do. Like your ego will flare up, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to create as much of a, of a, of a barrier towards communication and reconciliation when you're working internally, okay? Um, I, again, it is it is going to play a role, but for, but but 
when you're working internally and you're and you're you're noticing these things, you do have more of an of an opportunity to understand just how much your ego is influencing something versus when you're in the physical reality, when you're when you're when you're your attention when your attention is placed outside of you, okay? Um, yeah, divine feminine, the divine masculine wants to reconcile, wants to talk, wants to be emotionally available, wants to be vulnerable. Divine feminine, the divine masculine, wait, I'm sorry, divine masculine, there it is. Divine masculine, the divine feminine wants you to come back. The divine feminine is not afraid. The divine feminine is not mad, is not hurt, is not really not as resentful as you think. You must get, you just have to, both of us have to just put all of this hurt and all this pain aside and just come home. And home is here first. Okay? It, it, and this was coming up, actually, I haven't, I'm going to be finishing the rest of the Zodiac readings for the second half of the month after I do the Twin Flame videos. But... In um, the first nine, I still have four left, but in the first nine uh, uh, signs, there were so many messages of, of, of all is not lost. And all will never be lost because in spiritual truth, you know, we are all one and the same. You cannot ever be separate from, some, from that which is you. You can never be separate from that which is you. And when we're, when you're in, 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 in an internal reality, in the balance between masculine and feminine, you know, there is always a chance to reconcile. Your inner divine feminine will, will, will never completely abandon you and cut you off and leave you high and dry, divine masculine. And divine feminine, your inner divine masculine is not going to do the same either. Why would we do that? We're just cutting ourselves off from each other. We're just cutting ourselves off from ourselves. And it is our intentions to be whole again. So it, 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 I, I'm saying all that to say there is no, there's nothing that is insurmountable when it comes to reconciling with yourself, okay? And when you reach that reconciliation point and you get, you root yourself there and you start living your life from that point of balance between masculine and feminine, standing, hand in hand, side by side, combining their abilities to, to create something greater than the, the, the individual pieces, you will see such, you will experience such a change in your reality. Everything will just start to flow. You won't, you may not be so anxious anymore. You may not be so afraid anymore. You know, like your life will change when you balance your masculine and femininity within. Your life will change when you balance your chakras, when you balance your, your energies, your, 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 your different bodies, because you've got your astral body, your, your emotional body, your light body, your physical body. Like When everything comes into balance, everything changes. And I feel like I'm kind of preaching to the choir with that point, like I'm, I'm saying something y'all should already know, but I just want to put it out there. I, so I, I want you guys to understand, I want all of us to understand this. Um... So in my case, what I've ex been experiencing is just some of the most beautiful harmony within myself I think I have ever experienced in my life. Yeah, because I've never been, this is the, f this is the first time in my life that I have been this balanced. <laughs> and let me tell you, man, just about, I wouldn't say before, th <laughs> three years ago is when I really started balancing out. Like I really started balancing everything, energetically, mentally, emotionally. And I finally reached a point where it's just beautiful. I just love myself. I love being with myself. I love being around myself. I love caring for myself. And I'm not trying to brag. I'm trying to get you guys to like, I'm trying to motivate you guys. Come on, let's balance out. We can do it together, yeah? We're all here for each other. Let's balance out because it's beautiful. And if you ever want to come into the union with your twin, you balance, got to balance that stuff out, guys. Okay? All right. So, uh, oh, I just realized I don't have my animal cards. I didn't get them out. 
So I'm gonna do that. Give me just a second. Yep. Animal cards. Okay. All right, guys. So it's just gonna be the same way. It's gonna be the mirror reading, um, and then with the relationship. Um, The relationship spread, sorry, lost my train of thought. The relationship spread uh, with the animal oracle deck, excuse me, by the wild unknown, yeah? So, this is for twins in separation, yes? So let's, let's do this, yeah. Sorry guys, I'm gonna, whew, there's a lot of energy running through me right now, so um, I apologize if I'm stuttering or <laughs> having trouble getting the words out. All right, so the deck, as always, with a mirror reading, the deck on the left is going to symbolize the Divine Masculine, and the deck on the right is going to symbolize the Divine Feminine. So, let's get set here. All right. Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. Please bring forward the best messages for the Twin Flames at this moment in time. Please give us an accurate representation of the Divine Masculine, symbolized by the deck on the left, and the Divine Feminine, symbolized by the deck on the right. An accurate representation of their current energies, individually, and how these energies are interacting with each other, collectively. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, I'm going to start by shuffling the Divine Masculine's deck here. Best messages for and from the Divine Masculine, please. Okay, one more shuffle. Um, in just tuning in with the Divine Masculine right now, yeah, I'm going to give it one more shuffle. Um, I just feel, I feel like I want to cry right now. I feel a lot of heartbreak. And that makes me sad. Um, but it's understandable. <laughs> it's really understandable. Uh, given a lot of the things that have been, a lot of the energies that have been around lately, it's just... There's some heavy stuff going on right now. Okay, so the Divine Masculine is set. I'm going to leave that there. And next, I'm going to get into the Divine Feminine. Okay, Divine Feminine. I was like, what is that? What is that noise that I'm hearing? It's I have a bottle of nail polish here on the <laughs> on my desk. And it's moving around. I'm gonna move it. Okay, that's better. Alright. So, Divine Feminine, we're gonna start with you. We have your overall energy here, and we're starting with the King of Cups in reverse. So, uh, Divine Feminines. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, this is your inner divine masculine, the King of Cups in reverse. Um, he's blocked because there are blockages between you and your inner divine masculine. This is being represented by um, people in your outside life, in your in your physical life. So, word of advice to begin with. If you are having trouble identifying what it is you are, um, um, what your challenges are when it comes to approaching uh, masculinity and masculine energy, um, it would be good for you, it would be helpful for you to analyze the relationships that you have with other masculine figures in your life and the challenges you face with them because those challenges are the same challenges you're going to face internally. Ooh, we have the King of Swords in reverse. 
And we have the Knight of Wands in reverse. We also have the Ace of Swords in reverse. All right, so what we're talking about here, obviously the message for this week, the conversation for this week is definitely about, ba about balance. Now, what I can tell you already with the Ace of Wands, I'm sorry, the Ace of Swords that is underneath all of this, the deeper, the, the deeper issue here uh, that I'm picking up is that there is, a, there is an inability or um, not an inability because it's not like you can't do it. You're perfectly capable of doing this. But um, in many cases, you're choosing or refusing not to see the truth about something, not to see something for what it truly is. So that's being represented by the Ace of Swords in reverse. And it's also being represented by the King of Swords reverse because it's like it's an undiplomatic, unfair approach when it comes to something, um, when it comes to also when it comes to communicating about something. Um, and we have the Knight of Wands in reverse. So what I'm hearing, what I'm picking up with the Knight of Wands in reverse, Divine Feminine, is um, a lot of the trouble that you're having is surrounded by not wanting to see the truth about something with the Ace of Swords in reverse, not communicating well or not, um, not giving something a chance, not being diplomatic. And so it's turning you into like this fiery, passionate um, warrior in a sense, but you're fighting the wrong fight. You're fighting for the wrong reasons. You are helping to perpetuate this situation when you approach it in this way. And I'm not saying the Divine Masculine doesn't have their own situations um, when it comes to that, but um, because obviously this is a two-way street, but on the part of the Divine Feminine, there really is a need to face things and see things for what they truly are and understand that just like you're hurting, the divine masculine is hurting too, okay? And the more the more we react from a place of pain and one up it and, um, you know, trying to get revenge in a way, because I do feel like that's some of what the Ace of Swords is saying for some of you, um, but it would be more so if the Five of Swords were to come out. But that's a little. That's a little bit about it. It's like this. It's not actually doing it, but having having a desire to want to get revenge is only going to keep this wheel spinning in the way that it's always been. The only way it's going to stop spinning this way is if we stop it ourselves. The buck stops here. You know what I mean? Okay. Let's get into the storyline. We're starting off with the magician in reverse with. Yeah, the devil, indulgence, okay? So so the magician is in reverse. You are manifesting, uh, I, I, pff, look at it, I'm, I'm just gonna tell it like it is, Divine Feminine. You are manifesting the reality that you see in your life. And you're, you're manifesting this. Now that the magician is in reverse, so what, that, what's that, what that's saying to me is, yeah, you're still manifesting, but you're manifesting things that you don't necessarily want. Why? Because you're indulging in the negativity of the situation. And by indulging, I mean keeping yourself in a victim consciousness. Keeping yourself on the merry-go-round of, oh, woe is me. Um, and I'm really not trying to insult anybody, but, oh, woe is me. X, Y, and Z has been done to me. I'm never going to get anything else. I'm always going to just be stuck like this in this position. This is all I will ever experience. This is all I will ever face. Well, you damn right it is if you keep indulging in that self-defeating mentality. What you need to do is drop this devil bullshit, pick yourself up, pull up, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and start doing the work to manifest what it is you truly want to manifest. What is that kind of work? Well, first of all, it starts with changing your mindset changing your view of yourself, changing your beliefs, letting go of, and this is also what the devil is talking about, being entrapped by belief systems that are only hold, holding you down, holding you back, okay? In other decks, the devil, like the original Rider Waite deck here, actually, I have it right here. I want to show this to you because I really want you guys, if you're unfamiliar with it, I really want you to see this depiction because to me, this is, and it's, I mean, this is like, original deck here so you know um well whatever you know what i mean but this image is so powerful i really want you guys to see this 
The devil here in this deck is depicted this way. And do you see how you have the devil there and then you have this man and this woman down there naked but chained to the devil? Okay. Do you see how loose those chains are around those people's necks? Look at that. They could slip that off their necks at any time. Okay. So when it comes to this situation, Divine Feminine, you could change your mind about anything at any time. You could put down that ice cream scoop or that spoon and stop indulging in these things at any time. But you have to choose to. And there is where the magician in reverse is coming up again because the magician doesn't do a damn thing that he or she doesn't want to do. Okay? So if you don't want to manifest this stuff anymore, if you don't want to manifest these relationships with toxic people and, and, and toxic twisted men that are men or women, whatever, masculine energies that are only going to fulfill this prophecy you have put forward, then you got Then you have to make the choice to change, not them. No, it does not start. You, you, it's not about finding somebody and then like say, say they're a fixer upper finding someone and then molding them into what you want. No, it's about finding what it is you want within and allowing the universe to bring that to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, and what I wanted to say, um, I understand that a lot of us, it, when I said, you know, attracting masculine energies that are just going to be this self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes. A lot of our divine masculines kind of have done that. I mean, they have been these people. I know that was, I know that's the case for me, but the thing about it is they're mirrors. Okay. So they are mirroring to us what we have going on internally. So when I say, so, so in order for that to change, in order for what you, your, what you receive to change, ultimately you have to change your beliefs. You have to heal from those wounds. Um, that that are being mirrored back to you that you're that are being that you're being triggered into and all that stuff You have to heal all that stuff Within and then you will experience the true love that you that you're that we're all looking for. Yeah And also keep in mind and this goes for both masculine and feminine and this is also on an internal level You might you like as you start trying to communicate and heal and and you know come into union within Yeah, there may be a little bit of resistance in that, you know Masculine or feminine will have these certain things that they'll want to say or discuss and blah 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 But at the same time when one side does their work it influences the other side to do their work and things get a little bit easier until you both are working together and really doing this healing in tandem. Yes? Okay, moving forward. Sorry guys, a lot to say. We've got the Seven of Swords in reverse with the Five of Cups. Um, yeah, the Five of Cups has been coming up a lot in the Zodiac readings. Um, so what I'm getting here for the Divine Feminine is, um, you know, kind of crying over spilled milk, um, mourning a little bit, kind of, but I feel like what I'm really picking up here is the Divine Feminine is really like either having trouble coming out of this, um, a feeling that all is lost, um, or is kind of refusing to come out of it. And I'm picking up it that if you're refusing to come out of it, it's because there are things that you don't want to face. What don't you want to face? The Seven of Swords. Now, the Seven of Swords is reversed here because there is a blockage. The Seven of Swords is trying, is, is really, what I'm feeling right now, the Seven of Swords is, um, is representing a lesson. Something that you need to heal within. So the reason why many of us now, whether you're consciously aware of this or not, this so if you're not consciously aware of it, I'm not saying that you're resisting coming out of this. This would be like you feel like you're stuck. You feel like you can't come out of this, this mourning, mournful energy. But ultimately, for the Divine Feminine, um, what needs to happen is the Seven of Swords energy needs to be faced. And that means that it needs to be seen internally 
or the the internally you got to go back and look at the, the ways that the seven of swords energy has been has been presented in your life presenting itself in your life and face those situations stop pushing them away stop running away from them um you know face them with intentions of healing them but understanding how it is you have manifested you have manifested with the magician these experiences into your life what is the core wound that brings this stuff up. What is the core wound that keeps you in a mindset or a belief system that continually manifests this stuff? And it's not even like it's continually manifesting really for any other reason other than that you just have not learned the lesson yet. So don't beat yourself up, Divine Feminine. Because if you're still going through something, that's okay. You just simply haven't learned the lesson yet. But if you don't want to have to go through it anymore, Learn the lesson. Yeah. Moving forward, we have, oof, hello, the tower. And this is kind of, and uh, honestly, I feel like this, this reading right now is a big old tower moment. At least for the Divine Feminine so far. I don't know what we're going to get into with the Divine Masculine, but I can imagine it'll probably be a tower moment for him too. <laughs> the tower with the Nine of Wands. Mm -hmm. But the Nine of Wands is in reverse. Um, okay, so this is a, so what the cards are saying here is, this is a tower moment in relation to, um, in relation to giving up and not putting forth the effort. A tower moment, an illuminating, an illumination for you, Divine Feminine, on how, in some cases, you may have just given up and just let things roll. But see, at the same time, as you let things roll and as more and more of this stuff that you were expecting to experience in your life came back, you kind of, you bitched about it. It's like, don't, look, don't bitch about something that you're not willing to do something about to change. If you're not willing to change something because you don't like it, then stop complaining about it. And that doesn't just go for the divine feminine, that goes for the divine masculine too. If you don't like something in your reality, do the work and change it. Don't complain about it like it's like like you have no control because that's bullshit. We all know that's bullshit. You do have control over your life. I mean, you can't control everything, but you damn sure have control over what it is you experience and what it is you manifest. Because it all starts internally. It all starts in the mind. What you think about, what you believe, is what the universe brings to you. And the universe will find any way, will always find a way to bring you the things that you focus on. Always. I mean, that's, that's the universe's job. It has nothing else to do but that. <laughs> I just saw 3311 on the counter. All right, finally, for the Divine Feminine, we have the Ace of Pentacles. And after this tower moment, I am very happy to see this because now you get to start over. You're being handed a brand new physical, uh, 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 3333, woo! Um, a brand new physical reality, a brand new start, okay? Ace of Pentacles with the Nine of Cups, but the Nine of Cups is in reverse. Wow, this is very interesting. I have never seen the Nine of Cups in this way. But the Nine of Cups in reverse is saying, um, is speaking to uh, a party atmosphere. Now, it's helpful that it's, you know, you see it, you see it's depicted like this as a birthday party. And that's so interesting because we have the Ace of Pentacles. And so... Like even with a birthday, you you're like you're starting a new year. You basically once you reach your birthday, you're like at the Ace of Pentacles. That's kind of interesting. But what I'm picking up here is illusionary. Um, an a, a false reality. There it is, that has been um, perpetuated and kept in place by substance, you know, um, cl cl uh, clouding the mind with food that we that we as in, as cert, as individuals shouldn't be eating and that I'm not saying I, I'm not speaking to anything specifically on a collective level I'm speaking individually like knowing that your body doesn't want certain things in it but you eat it anyway 
um, you know, overindulging in food, alcohol, um, drugs, any sort of escapism, that's coming to an end. And we have the Ace of Pentacles here. Now, in relation to what we've been talking about with this whole um, thing about, you know, balance and this Ace of Swords here in reverse, talking about not wanting to see the truth, that is what the Nine of Cups is talking about. The escapism. The woe is me uh, mentality instead of, huh, I don't like that. I'm going to change how I how I approach these things. I'm going to change my belief systems around that. I do not have to believe that every man, um, or I'm going to say it this way, every masculine energy is going to treat me wrong. I don't have to believe that. I don't have to believe that. And no, it doesn't make me, it doesn't make me stupid to be vulnerable enough to say, no, I don't have to believe that. You can take your your Debbie Downer energy and you can go somewhere else because I ain't having it here in my house. Right, Divine Feminine? Shh. I know that's right. <laughs> okay. Let's get to the Divine Masculine now. Divine Masculine, your overall energy, we're starting with... I like this. The King of Pentacles. And you are upright. We've got, underneath that, the Page of Swords. And we also have the Nine of Wands in reverse. Okay. And underneath all of that, we have the Seven of Wands in reverse. So, what's going on here for the Divine Masculine? Overall energy is, you know, um, the Divine Masculine is really standing in his physical power, okay? Um, and he very well may be um, checking in. I want to say spying, and I guess you can, you can consider it spying on a certain level, but he's very much checking in on the Divine Feminine with the Page of Swords here. Um, and... With the Nine of Wands and the Seven of Wands in reverse. Here's the Nine of Wands. Here's the Seven of Wands in reverse. Oh yeah, and I know you know I know you see that lover's card down there. Let's we'll talk about that later, I guess. But the Nine of Wands and the Seven of Wands in reverse um, are talking about and also the lovers too. It, it's talking about um, not fighting for this old stuff anymore, this old paradigm. And I already, now that I say that, I'm understanding that this is how the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine are mirroring each other. Whereas the Divine Feminine is now going through this period where we are um, healing and we're seeing the truth about something. And that's in relation to the Divine Masculine within and without also. The Divine Masculine is doing the same thing. But see, the Divine Masculine has already kind of gotten to the period. I feel like they've gotten to the point already where they've seen this truth. And so now it's, time, it's turned. And so now they're actually putting things into action. Because I really feel like they've known this stuff all, all they, they, they've known this stuff all along, or they've already come to that realization where they saw the truth. And so now they've been gearing up and building the confidence to really start putting things into action. And that's what's being represented here in the King of Pentacles. He's ready. He's standing in his power now. He, he's, he's, he's got the confidence now. Okay. Um, and now, so now they're start, so now they're checking in, <laughs> spying, if you will. They could be asking their friends to know like what's going on with them. Like, or how, how are they? Are they okay? Are they talking to anybody? Are they seeing anybody? Like what's, are they flirting with people? Like what's going on? Um, yeah, so that's how, so, okay, so, and so the Divine Masculine is, has seen the truth for the most part, um, and is now working towards coming to the Divine Feminine. We have in the storyline, the Eight of Cups, upright now. Well, I say now because I'm going off of all the other readings that I was doing, it was coming up, uh, reversed before. Um, the Eight of Cups with the Three of Swords reversed. Yes. So 
what I was just saying about the Divine Masculine um, no longer fighting for all of those previous situations that were un un unfulfilling for him, no longer being so defensive about them, and also no longer being so defensive about their relationship with you, like with the Divine Feminine, excuse me, um, the divine, ma divine Masculine, if you were defensive about your relationship with the Divine Feminine in the past, about how, nah, she's crazy, like, I don't wanna to talk to that broad, now you're kind of on the other end. You're kind of like, well, no, actually, I I love, this is this is not gender, guys, this is energy, but this is like, no, I actually love her. And you can't stop me. So the Three of Swords energy is re in reverse is releasing all of this stuff, all of this that has been keeping the Divine Masculine, generating these Three of Swords energies, he's walking away from them. Saying, bye, Felicia because I've had enough of this. And I'm walking towards my Divine Feminine, period. You wanna try and stop me? Okay, you're just wasting your time. <laughs> Moving forward, we have the Queen of Cups in reverse with the Eight of Wands in reverse. So a lot of the Divine Masculines might be very much in their emotions right now. Super, super emotional. But they also, with the Queen of Cups, may not be sharing it. And that's also what the Eight of Wands in reverse is saying. There is no communication right now. But this is not because they're angry with you, Divine Feminine. It's because they really just can't right now. Divine Masculine is so emotional. This is why I wanted to cry. I can feel it again right now. I want to cry. And it's because of this damn Three of Swords energy. Mm, wow. <laughs> but it's it's not like they're all like, oh, screw, I hate you, Three of Swords. No, it's because they're realizing how they have helped perpetuate this energy. How they have helped keep this cycle going. And conversely, that is what the Divine Feminine is going through right now. It's time for the Divine Feminine to face just how they have been helping to perpetuate this energy. Okay? And so the Divine Masculine, no, he's probably not going to talk right now. But mainly because they don't want to fight. They don't want to create any more hurt or drama than has already been created in this situation, okay? Okay, moving forward, we have the Six of, oops, the Six of Pentacles in reverse with oh, the King of Cups in reverse. This is a realization this is it. Yeah, it's a realization of uh, manipulative tendencies when it comes to love. And look, there is that mirroring. Yeah, there it is. The King of Cups in reverse came out for the Divine Feminine in her overall energy. And now the King of Cups is coming out in reverse for the Divine Masculine. And it's coupled with the Six of Pentacles. So the, the and this is this is part of the Three of Swords energy. The Divine Masculine is coming to the realization, if they have not already, if they have already, they're deep in it, trying to clean up the mess internally that has helped them be this emotionally manipulative and um, emotionally unavailable and greedy, emotionally greedy human being. Lack of trust is what came out here. Most of what the Divine Mass... Oh, look! I just realized we also have the counterparts here. The Queen of Cups and the King of Cups. So, also, that's saying to me... They're both in reverse. But ultimately, that is also saying to me that the Divine Masculine is in the process of balancing both masculine and feminine energies. Actually, the Divine Masculine has been balancing their feminine energies for some time now. And it may actually makes sense that one, that one of the twins would do it first and then the other would follow. Makes perfect sense. Um, what was I just saying? Oh boy, I lost my... Oh, uh, yes. Um, past hurts are really what has helped the Divine Masculine become what they have. They were not born that way. They were taught. So uh, please have a little bit of compassion for them, 44, 44. Please have more compassion for the Divine Masculine because they, they're they really just following what they were taught. 
It's really unfortunate. Okay, moving forward, we have, yeah, yeah, Five of Cups. Where is it? Yeah, more mirroring. Wow. With the Eight of Swords. That's so funny because for the Divine Feminine, for the Divine Feminine, the Five of Cups came out with the Seven of Swords. And for the five for the divine masculine here, the five of cups is coming out with the eight of swords. Both of them are talking about feeling trapped or being trapped in some way. Normally, the seven of swords does not talk about that, but in this situation, what it's representing here is a refusal to look at how the seven of swords energy is actually being generated from within. Okay, here. For the Divine Masculine, the Five of Cups is talking about feeling like all is lost in relation to what has been has gone on, in relation to this Three of Swords energy, in relation to the King of Cups and the Six of Pentacles reversed. Okay? Excuse me. The Divine Masculine does in fact feel like all is lost uh, when it comes to the Divine Feminine and feels like he can't do anything about it. He feels trapped. He's stuck in his head about this. And actually, Divine Masculine, you are making it even worse for yourself by continuing to be in this Eight of Swords energy. Because then, because the more you, the more and more you keep the momentum of these thoughts going about how you are not worthy, about how you'll never be able to live up to the standards that your Divine fem Feminine wants or what you think your Divine Feminine wants from you, especially if you guys haven't even communicated about it yet. The more you keep that momentum going, the more of it you're going to experience. The Eight of Swords is the type of energy where you can get yourself out of it. Now, is that easier said than done? Of course it is, but it's nowhere near impossible. And what I want to point out with the Five of Cups, I'm glad this came out um, in this deck because in the... Um, uh, in the Book of, Shad Book of Shadows Tarot, which I'm using for the Divine Feminine, it's not depicted this way. Excuse me. So I'm really glad it came out this way uh, in this deck. We have those three cups spilled down here. You see those three? But then you have the two cups behind. And this, the Five of Cups has been coming out for the second half of May for damn near all of the Zodiac signs. Don't quote me on that. But it sure as hell is a lot of them. And each time the message is, guys, whatever has spilled was toxic and needed to go to begin with. Keep in mind that all you have to do is stand up, dry your eyes, turn around, and grab those two cups that are behind you. For the Virgo video for the second half of May, um, this card came out under the, uh, at the very bottom of the overall energy. And I was saying, look, you still have the Two of Cups back there. These, these, these Two Cups back here is kind of symbolic of the Two of Cups in the Tarot, which talks about a soulmate relationship, a deep connection. And as I was putting the deck down to, um, I turned it over and put the deck down to pull out the storyline, the Five of Cups fell out of the deck. That, just that one card fell out of my hand and onto the, onto the desk. And I heard Eric look at the card underneath. And what was the card underneath? The Two of Cups. I shit you not. You don't believe me? Go watch the video. Well, watch it when I upload it. But still, <laughs> um, it's so look. You and I and I. I am. I was specifically guided to share that with the collective that are that are in tune with this right now, with the divine masculines that are watching this video right now, because all in no way is all lost. All is not lost. All will never be lost. And yes, I'm going to say that, and I'm going to say that as confidently as I can. All will never be lost. Why? Because you cannot be separate from that which is your own self. You cannot be separate, separated. You cannot lose that which is you to begin with. It may be a struggle to come back together. Don't get me wrong. It may be a knockdown, drag out fight. But you will get there. All will never be lost. Okay? Um, one thing I want to point out here between the two, the Divine Feminine has the King of Cups 
in reverse as her overall energy in that it is time now to deal with the twisted masculinity that is expressed through the divine feminine, okay? The divine masculine has the king of pentacles here and mm -hmm. is his overall energy, but this is the divine masculine standing in his authentic power. Not his twisted, masculine, over-egotistical, over-materialistic, um, all that stuff. Not standing in that power, but standing in his authentic power. And it's saying that to me because of the eight, the King of Pentacles upright. And when we have the King of Cups reversed, this is the Divine Masculine recognizing how emotionally unavailable and emotionally manipulative he has been in the past. Wow, this is some strong stuff, guys. Strong, strong stuff. So I'm going to get into the relationship reading now from the animal cards. Give me just a second here. Let me just shuffle this up a little bit. I don't know what... I'm sorry, guys. There are a bunch of kids outside. I might have to... I don't know. I might have to close the window. We'll see. But I'm talking over them, so I'm sure I might. Whoops. We've got one card already. Um, this is an overall message. Okay, guys, you're getting an extra message from Spirit and the Animals. We have Swan. Okay, this is an overall message for both of the twins. I'm going to lay this in the center. Um, and then I'm going to, okay, I'm going to draw the rest. So for the Divine Masculine... One card for the Divine Masculine, please. This one. Phoenix! Yeah! One card for the Divine Feminine, please. Dragonfly! Oh, and this is the, the Shadow Dynamic, Whale. And one card for the Illuminated Dynamic, please. One card for the Illuminated Dynamic. Please, spirit. There it is. Beaver. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so let's start with Swan. Now, this spread doesn't normally do this, okay? I did get an extra card that is, it was a flyer. It's an overall message for both twins, for the collective, but it's normally just four cards. One, two, three, and four, right? So, in, in terms of the overall message for um, an extra message, really, for uh, the collective, we have Swan. Here we go. Effortless creativity, sensitive mystic, elegant, uh, elegant power. The Swan represents heightened creativity. In Hindu mythology, the goddess, the goddess Sarasvati the embodiment of language, creativity, and artistry rides on the back of this graceful creature. The swan is ready to take us there, to the fluid realm of writing, creating, and reflecting. This potent and healing energy is not to be taken for granted or taken lightly. When the swan card appears, your soul is calling for attention, for solo time. An inner voice is waiting to be heard, an inner vision likely to be revealed. Yeah. When in balance, Swan possesses infinite, infinite creative power. Lord have mercy what's going on out there. When out of balance, Swan is agitated, snippy, and lacks vision. To bring into balance, one needs solo time and writing. So, yeah, this is speaking directly to separation. Hold on a second. I'm just going to close this window really quick. Um, but this is definitely speaking directly to... Uh, separation, okay, and needing this solo time, and many of us freak out. I know when I first, and when I first entered separation, I swear to God, guys, I cried for two days straight, <laughs> okay, so I totally get why we, we, why this is so hard, but at the same time, I now am under the, under the understanding, a deep understanding of how necessary separation is, okay, solo time, Time to balance. Your inner self is calling for harmony. And not just for the sake of being with your twin. Your inner, your inner self is calling for harmony within so that we can be balanced and happy. 
and do the things we actually came here to do, right? Not have to experience all this negativity, all this drama. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, we are manifesting the world that we experience, right? But there are some outside forces, energetic and um, physical in nature, like say energetic in energy beings and, and whatnot, then and non-physical beings. And then the physical beings being humans here on earth that manipulate us, other humans, and are also being manipulated by the non-physical energetic beings. And that's what I'm talking about here. So this is, this is the paradigm coming down. This is the mind control stopping. This is saying, no, I don't actually have to believe what you're telling me to believe. I can believe something else. The moment you take your power back in that way, honey, baby, boo-boo, child, you are Gucci. Because it all starts in the mind, guys. 55, 55, on the counter. Change is coming it all starts in the mind, guys. So if you don't, if, so, if, so if you're not allowing someone else to control your mind, you can create anything you want. We have two transformative cards here that are representing the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And it's amazing because even the colors match up. We have Phoenix here for the divine masculine, which, I mean, red orange, yellow, sacral chakra, the, the, sac the, the root, uh, your root chakra, sacral chakra, uh, your solar plexus. These are all the domain. These are all domains that the divine masculine resides in, is most comfortable in, is, 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 this is, material nature is like his, his domain. Whereas spiritual nature represented here with the blue, the purple, there's a little bit of purple in there. Well, not really. But bluish, yeah, I mean, there's, it's a deep blue, whatever. But this is still, these are colors that represent more ethereal nature, okay? The, the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, the crown chakra. And then, of course, there's the heart where both come together. The heart would also be the fifth dimension when you're talking dimensional reality. And the heart, or the fifth dimension, is where one experiences, is first comes in contact to, with unconditional love when moving up from the first and onward. So just, just the fact that we have two transformative cards that are even representing masculinity and femininity, femininity in, in the colors, it's, woof, it's strong and it's powerful. I just wanted to point that out. So... Starting, kicking us off for the Divine Masculine, we have Phoenix. Freedom from suffering and past karma. All is not lost, Divine Masculine. Reincarnation. The Phoenix represents the transformation of our past. It doesn't mean running from it, denying it, or burning bridges with rage. The Phoenix employs an advanced technique described in yoga as the burning of impurities through practice and dedication, also known as tapas. The essence of Phoenix is with us when we realize we have been suffering too long and something must change. We take a stand and decide to live consciously instead of being driven by the unconscious mind and its long list of fears and aversions. At that very moment, the spark of the Phoenix is lit and the great bird helps us burn through our baggage. We no longer run from who we are, what has happened to us, or what we have done. The, quote, stuckness and, quote, dead weight fall into the ashes as a lightness and clarity emerge. Oh, I'm sorry, and a lightness and clarity emerge. As the stagnancy continues to smolder, the phoenix lifts our spirits up and up, and we begin to recognize ourselves. Hold on a second. We begin to recognize ourselves again. We may catch a glimmer in our eye that wasn't there before. Look closely. It's a sign the fire of transformation is upon your wings. Phoenix and the first chakra. The ancient yogis believe that our heaviest karmas reside in the first chakra. This earthen center is also called Muldahara, or our root. The act, the Ascent of the phoenix begins here, and as the entanglement of karmas is slowly burned, it rises from the ash toward the navel center, 
Again and again, it makes this journey from first to third chakra, purifying our essence, freeing us from the past. I know that's right. <laughs> All right, next. For, I mean, really, there's nothing else to say. I'm just going to go through it. Um, next, we have Dragonfly for the Divine Feminine. And I have to say, dragonflies are one of my favorite insects. They're so cool. And they're gorgeous. I mean, they're beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Some of the colors that come off of them sometimes are just stunning. Stunning. All right. Whoops. For the Divine Feminine, we have Dragonfly. Master of Light, Illusion, and the Mind. Hello! What were we just talking about, Divine Feminine? The Dragonfly is an ancient and ethereal creature that awakens a sense of wonder in all. The Dragonfly is a symbol of the mind, as it is always moving, shifting, shimmering, and changing. When the Dragonfly card appears, it's worth considering the quality of your mind and perception. Are they restless or still, dreamlike or crystal clear? This situation at hand may be different than it appears at first glance. The dragonfly reminds us to calm the mind so the light of wisdom can shine through. When in balance, dragonfly sees clearly, is joyful, and is magical. When out of balance, dragonfly can't concentrate and has a busy mind. To bring into balance, one must focus on the breath. And what remember when I was talking about here with the Nine of Cups in reverse, this was about, um, this is definitely about numbing the mind, clouding the mind, main, keeping the mind clouded with the Ace of Swords in reverse too. Yeah, let me put them like this. Keeping the mind clouded specifically so that you don't have to face something. Underneath all of that, we have the Hanged Man, and the Hanged Man is upright. See right there, the Hanged Man is upright. Oh, here, I'll show you. And this is definitely part of the message, so I want to talk about it. The hanged man is upright. The hanged man is self-imposed isolation, self-imposed suspension. But it's done so in order to receive enlightenment, to see things from a different point of view. So in essence, Divine Feminine, you may find yourself in this moment, you know, maybe for the next week or whenever this, this, whatever, whenever this reading resonates with you, you may find yourself moving into a period of, of isolation. But that's in order so that you can clear your mind, you know, detox your mind even. And that doesn't even have to be from physical substances. That could just be detoxing your mind from toxic thought patterns, toxic beliefs. Oof. Wow, powerful. Um, I do want to point out that at the core of our reading for the, from the animals, we have water, emotion, healing nurturance, flow, power even, but emotional power, magical power. Okay, um, the uh, shadow dynamic of the relationship right now is whale. And, all, and keep in mind, guys, I should have said this in the beginning. Um, if you're new to, if you're like, if you're new to my channel, you're just now, this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, um, thank you for 133, 30, oh, sorry, I just saw 333, an hour, but 333. Um, if you're new to the channel, first of all, thank you for t tuning in for over an hour, but, um, I, I have done, I have changed my reading so that, um, I'm doing a mirror reading for us because our, our focus, like I said, like I've been talking about all night, or, um, sorry, all, <laughs> all day, um, is balance between masculine and feminine. So when you're looking at this reading, you can always look at this, like even if you're a divine feminine and you're struggling with what it is you need to heal associated with the divine masculine, well, a good place to start is right here. Whatever came out with the divine masculine, you can start here. Because ultimately, this could be what your divine masculine within is experiencing. Now, when it comes to the animal reading, do this the same way. You can look at this the same way. This is not just your relationship with your physical divine masculine in the uh, physical world. This is also about the relationship within. Okay. All right. So, uh, the shadow dynamic is whale. Here we go. 
Whale. Desire to delve deeper. Profound peace. Ancient wisdom. The whale represents profound emotional health and stability. Whale personalities are not afraid of emotional expression or traversing difficult terrain, as they have overcome many challenges in their lives. These experiences have enriched them, given them stability, strength, and a depth that is rare. Whale, whale energy is usually linked to, a fe to the feminine forces of compassion and communication. We can depend on whale personalities when all else seems lost, and trust them to be a beacon in our darkest hour. When in balance, whale is calm, steady, and deeply compassionate. When out of balance, whale is heavy and slips into the old, quote, story. To bring into balance, one must practice regular self-care. Um, obviously, the message here is, you know, dive deeper. And don't be afraid to dive deeper. Guys, I mean, if you're watching this video, if, if you're watching this video, and you're still watching this video, and you're still engaged, Honey, you are on a twin flame journey, and you got this. I mean, you can do damn near anything. I mean, we all can, even if you're not on a twin flame journey. But, yo, if you can, if you can walk this twin flame path and still be okay, then you can dive deeper into your emotions and face the things that are truly holding you back. Okay? All right. The Illuminated Dynamic, finally, for to round out the reading, to finish off the reading, we have Beaver. Hard worker, loyal, tireless, family first. The Beaver personality is a welcomed sight. These good-natured and dependable creatures have infinite love and enthusiasm for family and express it by way of the earth element, providing a home and financial stability. Although a beaver doesn't usually initiate a project, once started, they'll work steadily for weeks, months, or years to see it through. The beaver card appears when the task at hand requires your long-term steady effort. It can also signify that it's time for some karma yoga, selfless service. When in balance, beaver is happy and, is doing mean and does meaningful work. When out of balance, beaver feels useless and worn out. To bring into balance, one must can do some physical labor or selfless service. All right. So the message in the so the, so the shadow the shadow dynamic of the situation is needing to dive deeper. Okay. The illuminated dynamic of this of the situation or or of the relationship between masculine and feminine is perseverance. Nine of Wands energy. Just keep swimming. Just keep doing the work. Okay. Um, Long term. This is not. This is not some some boop boop. I'm done. Okay, yay. Moving on. No, this is gonna take some time. It's gonna take some effort, but it's worth it, because ultimately you are rebuilding. You're putting yourself back together. You are becoming whole. This is how we become whole again, ladies and gentlemen. By balancing masculine and feminine within. By diving down as deep as we possibly can, and still trying to deep dive down deeper and dealing with all of the things that come up, releasing all of the blockages and the, and the, the pain and, and, and the drama and the struggle. Let that go. It's not serving anyone. You know what? It is serving some individuals. It's serving darkness. But why do you want to serve darkness when darkness is only going to try and control and manipulate you and hurt you? I mean, hey, no judgment. That's all you. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. And but if that's what you do, what you want to do, I don't know why you're still sitting here listening to me ramble on. <laughs> all right. Anyway, there it is, guys. I hope that was helpful. Um, I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and yeah, an hour and ten minutes. Well, an hour and nine technically, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. I love you guys. I really, really love you. And I'm here. If you want to do a reading, you know, just hit me up. You need some help. You need some clarity. I am here. My, all my information is in the description box below. I know this is hard guys. I know it's hard. And I'm not one of those people that stands here on my soapbox preaching about something that I haven't even experienced myself. Girl, ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. So if I'm, if I'm here talking to you guys about something, it's because I've, I've either 
I've I either experienced it myself or I'm currently going through it. So I'm in the same boat, guys. I would encourage you all to speak with each other, communicate with each other, you know, share your stories with each other, build friendships, build, build alliances, you know, because it's not like we can really talk about this out in the, in, you know, in the open world without looking like we have six heads. <laughs> okay? All right, guys. I love you all. Mwah. And I look forward to connecting with you guys again for our next discussion. Take care. Bye.